Since she was a child, patient Heather Bailey dealt with the humiliation from a large space in her front teeth. As an adult, she hid from the camera, still shy from her smile. Heather's main concern was closing the large space between her upper centrals with the result of a polished, full smile. She also desired a permanent white shade so she could stop her weekly bleaching treatments. Her intraoral evaluation concluded adequate candidacy for the procedure with normal temporomandibular condition, no traumatic incisal relationships, and a good standing of periodontal health. Determined by the width of her smile, Heather's treatment plan included the placement of eight lumineers. She chose Ultra Bond Shade B0 for permanent whitening, and no cosmetic contouring was necessary. So if you take a look at our setup, also we have the lumineers right here. And Lisa's put two solutions on those lumineers, porcelain conditioner, which is citric acid, it's an organic acid, and she's put on the Serenade Prime, and that's the silane. The other thing that Lisa did before we uh, got started here is she took the porcelain polishing paste and polished our patient's teeth that gets rid of the plaque. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is take paint on dental dam and place it on the lingual side of these teeth. And the reason I'm going to do that is because wherever I put the paint on dental dam, uh, the ultra bond will not stick to the teeth. And one of the things you have to watch out about this little trick right here is the patient has diastomas. And I don't want it running over to the uh, labial side and prevent the lumineers from seeding. Now close your eyes. Close your eyes. And we blocked out the lingual sides. Uh, we blocked out the occlusal surface of the bicuspids. And I'm using etch and seal to uh, prepare the surface of the enamel. By using etch and seal, it's medium viscosity. Notice how it stays clinging to the tooth. So it, if I want to use it on my regular cavity preparations and dentin is exposed, the aluminum oxalate will seal the dentinal tubules and help prevent sensitivity. So we're going to apply two solutions to the tooth, etch and seal, and tenure AB. I like tenure AB because it's not light dependent. It's been used over the years. It's been clinically proven. Probably in about 10 to 20 minutes, we will have done surface preparation and bonded the luminaires. And well, actually, I wouldn't want to take longer because the longer you're in that position of surface preparation before you get the luminaires bonded, why the more chance you have for contamination. So here we are. Tenure S is a bond enhancer. Now I've completed surface preparation and we're going to place the lumineers. But everything was ready ahead of time. We weren't doing one tooth at a time or anything. We're doing them all. I can do all these teeth in the same amount of time it takes me to change one to get the right shade. And you can see how easy these go into place. This is the part where even though I may seem to be relaxed, it's the stage where I'm the most concerned because anything I do in here, if I don't do it right, is pretty much committed. And I gently seat each luminaire. And when I put the tip on it lightly, I see a little ultra bond ooze out from all the margins. That's critical. Put your eyes. Now we'll do the right lateral. I always stay one tooth away. What I've just done is spot cured the luminaires and magnification is really critical to see all these margins. It really isn't a difficult procedure because we're just placing it. It's very low in viscosity and when it polymerizes it's rock hard. Close your eyes and close your eyes. Now I'm taking a half cotton roll dipped in tenure S and wiping off a lot of the excess here. Close your eyes. So now we're going to start the finishing. I'm using a Sure 349 instrument. It never scratches the uh, glazed porcelain. And the other thing about using the blue paint on dental dam, it's important you can distinguish it from Ultrabond. So here we are. And look how nice that cleanup is in that lingual gingival area. 
nice and sharp. So then I'll take the Sure 349 instrument now on the labial and start removing any ultrabond that's on there. And there's very little on there today. Some days there's more than others. And you never want to take a Hygiena scaling instrument. This is an orthodontic band seating instrument, the Sure 349. And orthodontists use it all the time. And all of these instruments I'm using are in the clinician's finishing kit, the Luminaire's finishing kit. So now I take a 12 fluted burr and I go on the inner proximals of the porcelain and with a four power magnification, I can see and distinguish between the ultrabond and the gingiva and then I can take the ultrabond out from in between the contacts. I'm going to take the football shaped diamond and I like to go on the lingual side and I'm blending the porcelain and the ultrabond together. Now let's take a look at the uh, interproximal areas. I'm going to use the needle nose diamond. And now I'm getting rid of the shoulder that I created. After it's bonded, we go in a 45 degree angle and shave that away. Okay, let's wipe that off. Now look at the sharpness of the embrasures and everything. Come over here where we haven't worked on those interproximals yet. They still look good but the definition isn't there like it is on the left side. Now we're going to take the long narrow diamond. We finished with the needle nose. So I'm going on the occlusal surface and defining the interproximal embrasures. And removing as much ultrabond as I can. And I'm just taking my diamond and let it follow the interproximal embrasures Okay, so now we'll open the uh, contacts. Now look how easy that went through. See that? And it's all easy because I got rid of the ultrabond before I tried to go in and open that contact. Now I run into a little resistance, so I stop, and with finger pressure, I start rocking. And that way, when you break through, you won't slice through the interdental papilla. Now we use the Seri Sander. Seri Sander is a safe sided diamond. There we go. That's nice and easy. And we just go through all these contacts. And when I don't get open today, I'll have open for me just by her natural mastication when she comes in next week. Then we go to the 30 fluted burr and go over those areas where we've uh, used the diamonds to roughen the surface. And the 30 fluted will almost not remove any porcelain, but it will smooth that surface so that when you get in there with a polishing paste, porcelain polishing paste, you can restore it back to its original gloss. And I use it on the incisal edges the same way I would use a disc. Let's take a look at the occlusion, because if you don't have harmonious occlusion open, you're going to break these. Close. Okay, open. Now let's take a look and see. So far, it looks like all of her marks are on natural tooth structure. And what you don't want to see is really strong marks on the porcelain. You want to see the strong marks on natural teeth. These lower anteriors like to knock these incisal edges off of your uh, luminaires. So I like to take and shave those down so they're not sharp right angles. And just rounding these edges makes such a difference from having a sharp point that wants to break those off. So now we're going to take a look at the patient overall. I would tend to not smile in pictures and try to hide my teeth. Um, I, I didn't like my smile before. The Luminaire's procedure didn't take very long at all, and now I will be able to smile without closing my mouth or <laughs> take pictures normally and not be so self-conscious about the gaps in my teeth. I think this Lumineers actually helps, would help build self-esteem for people. Um, uh, you don't really realize when you're older how much that has affected you throughout your entire life. Oh yes, I would definitely recommend this procedure to everyone.